To surgeons of Reddit, what is the most disgusting thing you ever had to remove from someone? In Cambodia operated this man for what I thought was a bladder stone. Turned out to be a bladder stone calcified over a coil of IV tubing. Shoved up his urethra by Khmer Rouge 20 years earlier during torture. A physician GF of mine described removing a tumor that was from stem cells. The cell's DNA caused them to grow into any body part, so the tumor contained teeth, hair, and bone fragments. That sounded absolutely disgusting to me. I worked in a hospital lab that had loads of these come through. On my first day there was one that had bone, teeth, muscle, hair, nails, and brain matter. The consultant was cutting it open and I was told to shadow. The consultant asked if I wanted to touch it. I was very surprised at how soft brain matter is. I had gloves on. Abjin MD here. In a pull up for this one. I wasn't surgeon. But was on the team. Crackhead patient with no prenatal care. Roughly 43-44 weeks pregnant. Don't ever get that pregnant. Found unconscious and brought in by M's in septic shock. Ultrasound barely makes out any recognizable anatomy of the fetus. Because it has been dead for so long. CT scan shows air in the uterus and inside the fetus suggestive of gas gangrene of the fetus. Likely the source of infection. Patient goes from IQ to off for postmortem C-section in attempt to remove the source of infection. The uterus is just boggy and soft and when they enter the uterus, the smell just overwhelms everybody. A nurse and about tech both had to leave the ore. Everybody putting benzoin smelly crap on their faces to distract from the odor. The entire or wing becomes rancid. Deliver the fetus which is skin peeling off and is so edematous and covered in ulcers that it's lost the normal morphological features of being a human. Tissue break down everywhere. They clean up and put her back together. Back to IQ intubated sedated. Clinical course isn't improving. Repeat workup suggests necrotizing fasciitis. Back to or with general surgery. Cut out the infected fascia. Also, the uterine incision site is grossly infected and breaking down. Hysterectomy performed for infection source control. Patient starts improving. Wound was left open due to infection. Eventually partially repaired in stages. Still septic with a central venous line in her neck on IV pressers. Acute medication that keeps up your blood pressure because your body loses the ability to do it itself. Wean off sedation. Patient violently pulls out the breathing tube. Announces frick you. You long line of racial slurs at the everybody. Central line and press is still going. Patient signs out against medical advice and leaves and doesn't let anybody remove the central line in her freaking jugular vein. Disappears into the night just as mysterious as she came in. Don't do drugs, kids. Surgeon gear. But an objin so all I see is stuff stuffed in vaginas and anuses. All kinds of kids toys. Remote controllers. Vegetables. Cherries. You name it. But the one that stood out the most for me was when a patient used a Tampax and couldn't get it off. She had a very discreet vaginal bleeding I assumed to be her period. Hence the Tampax. A brief physical exam and found nothing. Except for a small, hard lump in the upper side of the vaginal canal. I double check and there we found the Tampax. After it pierced the skin and lodged itself between vagina and bladder. That was an interesting surgery. Not a surgeon, but was the anesthesiologist in charge of the patient. Patient was rushed in for emergency wound debridement. They basically clean a wound, trim its edges, scrape cut off infected parts. The guy was febrile and tachycardic, heart beating fast, and lab results were still pending. It's a government hospital of a third world country, so I asked the surgeon for the diagnosis. They said it was Fernie's gangrene. Note, if you're queasy, do not google that. Pending septic shock. Okay. So we transferred him to the operating table. And put the guy under general anesthesia. Then. They removed the patient's diaper. The patient's scrotum. Perineum. Inner thighs. And perineal area were all black. Necrotic. And oozing. Apparently the patient noticed that some. Foul smelling stuff was leaking from his anus nearly two weeks earlier. But paid it no mind. And the infection spread. And the smell. We're wearing respirators due to the pandemic, but the smell somehow seeped through. Anyway, the surgeons had to remove a lot of skin, subcutaneous tissue, 
and some muscles, and removed one of the guy's testicles while the other was left exposed. They also had to remove part of the anal muscle since those were liquefied too, and the guy was given a colostomy. Not a doctor RN here, only two to share, fella with a whole Vidalia onion in his bum. Surgically removed one piece at a time, a blooming onion if you will, also a fella, two rifle bullets removed from his bladder, intact. When questioned about it he says, well, I don't know what happened, I usually just pee them out. Boys out back steakhouse gonna be awkward now. Vibrators, dildos, pens, pencils, coins, pebbles, a broomstick handle, a fishing rod handle, an umbrella handle, a toothbrush handle, a hockey stick handle, a small glass jar, a test tube, a screwdriver handle, cigar, and a banana. These are all from the same guy. Oh isn't that from that old YouTube video? Slightly different, but I used to perform autopsies. I had a lady brought in who weighed over 400 pounds. Before we even got to cutting, we found that she was hiding things in the folds of her skin, including an open bag of pork rinds under one breast, and 17 oxycontin hidden all over her body. That's one I haven't seen on my 600 pound life yet, though I wouldn't put it past them. No wonder doctor now keeps after them so much for sneakiness and lying about their diet. Not a doctor or anything close but I do know what was removed from my mom's great aunt. She had a full hysterectomy in her 30s and for years after complained after terrible abdominal pains and no one would believe her. Well, she fell down the stairs in her 60s and she had to go in for x-rays and rather than a broken hip they found surgical scissors. Whoever performed her hysterectomy stitched her up with surgical scissors still inside of her. When they opened her up to remove them they also found a little towel thing as well that was used during the operation. The pains that no one would believe were from a doctor or nurse or whoever that left medical equipment literal inside of her that stayed for 30 some years. Not surgeon but work in healthcare. I removed approximately 6 pounds of stool from an elderly patient. It was not surgery. It was done digitally. As in digit. As in finger. This patient weighed 80 pounds and had not eaten in 2 weeks. Besides that I've assisted in removing various foods. Corn. Hard candies. A chunk of meat, glass shards, gravel, and a sex toy that became lodged. But that one ended up going to surgery as there were some complications. My ex used to work in surgery. She once had to remove a rubber fishing bait from a man's urethra. A rose stem from another man's. Not a surgeon, but heard surgeons removing tweezers and nail scissors from a girl's stomach debate whether they give them back to her or not. One said no, she'll just swallow them again. That's gross and depressing, the perfect team. I've removed a rolled up used mustard packet from someone's urethra. The guy had a habit of shoving whatever he had on hand into his penis whenever he got high on M. It was a once a month thing during urology residency. Also, hair pins, paper clips, screws, and a necklace. So please just buy our regular sex toy FFS. Surgeon friend of mine was telling me about a huge really thick custom dildo that they had to remove from a guy's butt. Typically, all they do when you're in that situation is they reach into your butt and pull it out. But this one was so thick there was literally no way they could get their hands around it so they had to do open surgery to remove it. Cutting into his intestine. But they managed to get it out. First thing the guy asked when he woke, where's my dildo? Priorities. I was the patient. I had a semi-rare jaw growth. It's called an odontoma it's basically a cyst full of calcifications and malformed teeth. I kept a bit of the teeth from it and I still have a jar of the removed teeth it's my teeth jar. Though the bits removed from their surgery are all different small size chunks of pointy looking bone. I would like to point out that I would immediately vacate your office home if I was offered to see your teeth jar. While I would be extremely curious. I would also think you are a serial killer. Well, obligatory not a surgeon and this is my aunt's story who isn't a doctor. This couple comes in, redneckish couple, woman in obvious discomfort and the fella looks like he's been laughing all afternoon. My aunt gets them into the room and goes through the standard questions while she notices a smell. Like, worst thing she's ever smelled in and a smell, including septic wounds and gunshots. 
finally gets to so what brings you in today and the guy busts out laughing. Fella answers her saying well we was outside and she fell asleep in her lawn chair so I done shoved a frog up her T while laughing hysterically. So apparently this lady had not noticed her husband doing this crap and the frog was somehow pretty in there. After a while, the frog died, hence the smell. On top of what I can only imagine was sweaty fishy smell since the woman had been napping outside in the summer and did not have great hygiene. My aunt had to glove up and reach in to remove the frog from this woman's pee after she vomited. To this day it's the only thing she has ever seen that made her vomit at work and is one of her favorite stories to tell no matter if they're eating or not. That classic prank, shoving a frog inside a sleeping person. I am a cattle vet, removing rotten fetuses via c-section or fitotomy, cut out via vaginal passage. Is not uncommon but if I never do another one it will be too soon. You stink for days. Obligatory I'm not a surgeon. But I am an RN who takes care of patients after surgery. Which looks like it's the closest you're going to get on this thread lol. A patient's entire freaking leg because it was literally rotting off of her body due to necrotizing fasciitis. Flesh eating bacterial infection. She was diabetic and really wasn't taking care of her diabetes. Or taking care of the diabetic foot ulcers she was getting. It got infected. Like, really infected. That thing was so nasty. Google pictures if you're feeling brave. It was unsalvageable. They had to amputate. The absolute grossest thing about it though was that we caught her and her husband bumping uglies in her hospital bed the day after surgery. I don't know about you, but for me there is literally nothing less sexy than the words necrotizing fasciitis. I guess he figured the gross leg was gone now so she was down to clown again. Seriously though, if you can avoid it, some can't. Type 1 is a B. Please keep yourself from getting diabetes. If you do get it, take such good care of it. There isn't anything in your body that diabetes can't wreck. It's horrible to see the ones who pretend they don't have it. The ones coming in for a foot amputation with a 32 ounce soda in their hands are just so sad. It's messed up. Sad to say I can imagine the smell. Helped, by helped I mean handing them the chains before gagging and throwing up for an hour. A friend with a cow a couple years ago, pregnant and way overdue, pulled out the corpse of a calf. It was rotting and fell apart as it came out. Friend's dad had to remove it in pieces. I stood back a few feet away, threw up repeatedly. It was absolutely revolting and gave me a new respect for anyone who had to do anything remotely similar. Even in the open air I couldn't breathe. Most rancid thing I've ever smelled. Cow survived in the end but by god I can still remember the stench. Not sure of the details but the cow did end up needing serious treatment. No, this is not normal. I was just unfortunate enough to witness an extremely rare occurrence where the calf wasn't birthed due to poor positioning and began to rot within. Not a surgeon, but a hospital worker. I was about to get a patient ready for surgery when their nurse stopped me. She warned me to not have any pens, pencils, or markers in view of the patient. When I asked why the nurse told me that the reason why I was getting her ready for surgery in the first place is because she likes to swallow these items and needs surgery to remove them. This was her fourth time going through this. Another patient had a similar condition, but instead of pens, pencils, and markers, it was razor blades. Let's go write a journal, the woman who ate the air. Not me but my best friend who just happens to be sitting next to me right now. I was doing my internship and during the abjin rotation we had one case that left the most experienced doctors traumatized. 16 yo. First pregnancy she hadn't had prenatal care. Goes to the a for abdominal pain. She was in labor. And not long after she arrived. She gave birth. A mass of green brown fatted and thick mud came out of her vagina. Covering the baby who was also absolutely green and not breathing. The smell was unbearable. My attending. Shocked at this sight asked me doctor. What the heck is that as shocked as he was I told him sir. I have no freaking idea. The pediatrician in turn took the baby. And ran to the NICU. The mother was taken to the IQ. Was placed in all the antibiotics available to humankind. And a ton of other drugs BC she was pretty much septic and with multi-organic failure. She lived long enough to let us know she had lost her parents a couple years ago and had been taken in by an uncle who sold her as a prostitute. Charging extra if they didn't want to use a condom. I was transferred to another department afterwards. 
There isn't enough alcohol to remove that mental picture from my brain. I removed half a guy's scrotum because it was rotten. This was just this week. Cut it off with the scissors. Guys, take care of your junk. Surgical first assist here. We once had a patient come in to have a banana removed from his rectum. The patient says he was working out, naked, and fell onto the banana which then got stuck. We finally got him under for surgery and started looking to remove said banana. We realized rather quickly that it seemed sort of plastic looking. Upon further examination it became evident that it was in fact a normal everyday banana, with a condom wrapped around it. Practice safe sex everyone. Drained a rectal abscess in the air. Nurse left the room as soon as the smell hit her. Had to finish draining a cup of pus by myself. And then pack the wound. Then dress the wound. Threw up after leaving the room. I don't know how the patient was able to lie still. Most disgusting thing by far. In 30 year practice. RN not a surgeon. I had a PT. Who over the last decade or so. Swallowed 9 steak knives. Several pens. Eyeglasses. Spoons. Broken Tupperware. Earbuds. And the list goes on. Her abdomen was basically one large adhesion. She spent a lot of time in mitts. She would frequently beat up hospital staff to get their belongings and swallow them. Having her as a patient was so stressful. This was more than two decades ago and I've never had the opportunity to share under acceptable circumstances. It was during orientation at the hospital I was to join. The medical director put up a slide showing an x-ray of an upper abdomen. There were 8 10 spherical shadows around the stomach and a bit south in the GI tract. He quizzed us to identify the problem. No one had a clue. The shadows were Barbie doll heads. The patient had, obviously, some significant mental health problems. He would rip the head off a Barbie doll, ingest it, pass it, boil it, and ingest it again. Eat, pass, rinse, repeat. The resultant blockage forced him to seek medical attention and surgery. Wince. The patient had, obviously, some significant mental health problems, to say the very least. Nothing removed during the surgery, but, saw a woman once who's got a pneumomediastinum from oral sex. Apparently, this dude's dong was so huge and he was so aggressive, that he caused serious damage to the inner walls of this lady's throat and their bio went into her chest, in between the lungs. Seeing as how no medical procedures have been described so far I might as well give it a go. Only disturbing because I did it myself but due to shenanigans I ended up with a piece of gravel under my skin. Eventually it worked its way until it had grind against my knee. Obviously this was uncomfortable so I had to get it out. Being a teenager and American I couldn't tell my parents or go to a doctor so I dug that sucker out with a bottle of vodka and a steak knife. 2 stroke 10 would not recommend. I'm not sure why I expected this to be entertaining. I should have moved past this. I should have headed out after I read just one or two. But no, I remain drawn to this thread like an insect to a bug zapper. Not a surgeon but a hunter. Whilst gralaching a deer, gutting, I removed a tumor mass attached to the heart the size of a bowling ball. Needless to say the carcass was destroyed and didn't enter the food chain. The cause, a crossbow bolt that appeared to pass straight through the chest at some point earlier in its life. The bolt was not inside the animal but there was an in and out hole and a plastic bolt feather lodged between the exiting ribs, poachers. It's common for smokers and abuses of other vasoconstrictors drugs like crack and methamphetamine to have most any part of their body die and need to be removed. Eventually their feet rot off and have to be removed which is bad enough, but worse is when the abdominal organs decay and fester before they come to the hospital dying. One of the most foul smells is a necrotic colon. It's usually black, green, and yellow, and begins to outright into a snot-like consistency. It still contains the stool which imparts its own odor to the mix and frequently it begins to leak out. Even after you remove it, the infection seated into the adjacent tissue continues to suppurate, releasing ours and drainage that finds its way out through the surgical incision, drains, and sinus reacts it forms and often takes weeks to months to resolve if the patient survives. So yeah, smoking. Totally gross way to zombify your insides and turn part of you into that actual decaying flesh the actors on Walking Dead make such a big deal over the disgusting odor. 
not a surgeon but rtyi my feet are killing me on hulu i noped out at the elderly diabetic whose foot was rotting from lack of circulation and fungus this is gonna sound pretty weird to those who don't own birds but i'm not a surgeon however i have done surgery on some of my birds so anyways, one of my chickens had an impacted crop and the non-surgical ways of fixing them weren't working. I'm not sure what I was expecting lol but two week old rotting. Partially digested grass and seeds smelled disgusting. What really made it bad was that I was there for about an hour without anything to block the smell. And crop is kind of like a stomach before the stomach with chickens. It's not really a stomach it's more a place where food is stored and partially broken down before it enters the stomach. When chickens eat grass that is too long the hole that leads from the crop to the stomach can become blocked and is now impacted. The more you know. Not necessarily all gross but some interesting ones. Tongue ring lodged in appendix. Chronic constipation leading to anticipated stool that caused the colon to explode. Bizarre of human hair filling the entire stomach. 16 baggies full of white powder. Probably the grossest one was a necrotic toe, but not just any toe. The skin was intact and when we cut into grey fluid came out. It had clearly been necrosed for some time. A stench of death I can never forget. At least press enter if you aren't going to use full stops. EMT here. Not my patient but I heard a squad get dispatched yesterday to a lady with a foreign object inside her vagina. Also. She was at home and said she had an x-ray confirmed said foreign object. Sometimes people puzzle me. Please not a taint explosion story. 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 Too late. Swaps of Dagoba has been linked. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.